to create a section view in Fusion 360 is actually pretty simple. Once we have our initial view laid out, we can then create a section view. We are creating, in this case, a full section view where we cut the part in half. What that allows us to do is see these internal features. The section views are extremely common with cylindrical objects or with parts that have more interior details. Again, we do not want to be dimensioning the hidden lines in this top view with all these diameters. It's hard to tell if we dimension each one, which one is, is which. By cutting this part in half, we are now dimensioning to edges and to no hidden lines. When you do create the section view, it will automatically list AA. If you did it again, it would be BB. You manually can change this, but we don't, or I don't see any need to. You will get a text box, and this one I've already um, changed the font size. It comes in extremely large. Highlight the text, change it to the same dimension text size, where we're using 0.1 inches. And this text box, being this so large, we have to move it then. We do want this close to this section view. Again, this will come in AA automatically, first time. Um, we will have some center lines that we have to create, showing that this is a curved surface. And we're really doing this to eliminate the need to dimension the hidden lines and to promote clarity. So just like any other drawing that we've done up to this point, we're going to create a drawing from this design in our A size title block. I've already determined that I want to use a scale of two to three. And I'm going to place this here as the front view. My hidden lines are turned on. I am going to project the top view for this one. Um, quite often you don't need multiple views. Sorry, you need two views for cylindrical objects. This one has like all these like stepped cuts in it and trying to put these all onto the section view becomes easier. It could be done, which we will look at for our next one, which looks like this. That we only have the two views because a lot of times for a cylindrical object you would not need the other view because all the information is given the fact that it's cylindrical all right before we do the section view i'm just going to go through our typical process scale the isometric down turn it into a solid or shaded and i'm now going to section this front view we want to divide this right down the middle. And that is not an instantaneous process. So I want to section this view. If I hover over the midpoint, I get that green guideline that keeps me in the center. I do want these section arrows or which way we're going to actually cut this. So there's one and there is two to create the full section and you will also get these hatch lines i think of it as like if you ran a bandsaw or some sort of saw you get kerf marks um, different hatch symbols are for different materials this being probably some sort of some sort of iron or steel the hatch pattern is this diagonal spacing. There are other hatch pattern types, but this is what we're going to stick with. One less thing to change at this point. So you will notice that this text comes in for the section. It is just a text box, but it's automatically generated. I can move it. This is signifying that this is section AA. We could do multiple section views. We're not going to at this point but the text size is extremely large. So if you double click, highlight it all, I can change that font size 
and we've been using 1.1, or sorry, 0.1. And if I have to move this later or now, I can move this around. Somewhere close to the object, not on it. And I need some center lines and some center marks, and we'll be ready to then dimension this. Center mark, and we have center lines, showing that this object is cylindrical. Stretch these out past the edge of the object, as we have for any center line up to this point. And we're ready to add dimensions. I can get away with a couple diameters here, this inner bore, this outer diameter, but from that point forward, it's going to get fairly complex or uneasy to read or unclear of what I am actually trying to dimension. The rest should be in terms of linear dimensions. Granted, I can say, take some of these dimensions here in the top view, and I could take all of these linear dimensions in the top. Uh, let's do overall. And maybe this last one here in the top. This sh text should fit in between the fact that we're using 0.1. But I don't want to take that depth measurement here. What I am going to do is create a depth of two. From here, we are actually taking these diameter dimensions. And setting our diameters. This would be what is known as stacking. Smaller dimensions go inside of larger dimensions. And I can move these the dimension text to be off center just to fit the text better. Another thing that you want to do is the number of decimal places. The precision for this one, we only need to go out to two decimal places for any given dimension. The fact that there are four decimal places is overkill. And if we take a couple decimal places off, they'll fit better. So we'll go in here, we'll change our number of decimal places to two. And the fitment in terms of stacking should go much better. I need to move this one, this view over a little bit. I got to fit another dimension in here. Maybe move this one. And I think all I have is, no, I have the center board diameter already. So this should really take care of our dimensions for this part. Again, creating the section view. Center aligned, that's the process that we're going to use. Um, we're not going to, we don't usually make a half section view or a broke out section view in this course. The text is automatically generated, it's too large, scale it down. Edit your title block, and this thing would be ready.